In Pakistan, devastating floods have submerged one third of the nation underwater. As a result of these deadly floods, millions of people have been robbed of their homes. Around 1,400 people have been killed and 13,000 have been injured. This catastrophic natural disaster is the worst flooding Pakistan has seen and has been regarded by some as apocalyptic. As the international community has been called to help Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has announced the federal government will match all donations by Canadians to assist in flood relief efforts until September 28 to a maximum of 3 million. The government has also pledged 25 million in additional aid for the floods and to support development projects in the nation. While providing humanitarian aid to Pakistan has received bipartisan support, Conservative MP and Shadow Minister for International Development Garnet Genius has released a statement calling for reforms to the federal donation matching program. Garnet joins us today to discuss the program and its shortcomings in detail. Thank you very much for joining us today, MP Garnet Genius. How are you? Very well. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you today. And um, I know we're talking about the situation in Pakistan, so I want to just off the top share my, uh, my condolences, uh, best wishes uh, to all those uh, who were affected, uh, lost loved ones, lost homes, uh, concerned for their, for their livelihood. Uh, and I think it's important for Canada to do, to do all we can to uh, support people during this difficult time. So why have you criticized the new federal donation matching program as unfair and exclusive? Yes, so this, this has been a, an issue that we have raised before in the context of other humanitarian crises, and we've tried to be constructive as the opposition, uh, but the government has continually failed to listen. The issue is uh, that when you have donation matching programs that only apply to a small number of organizations, then other organizations... Uh, that are doing good work on the ground are left out. And when you have a donation matching program that leaves some organizations out, it actually has the effect of them getting less money because sometimes donors will say, well, um, we want to give to a, 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 an organization that's receiving matching uh, and therefore worthy organizations don't get the same support from donors that they otherwise would. Now, this is particularly a problem when you have uh, small, local, diaspora-led organizations that may actually have a much larger footprint on the ground in, in a particular case, um, but, uh, but they don't have the sort of long history of dealing with governments and bureaucracies. And this isn't to take away from the good work done by, by the larger organizations that are, that are plugged in, but... but Big organizations that have uh, that have lobbyists and have people who who relate to government all the time, um, you know, they're they have a lot of advantages when it comes to dealing with government compared to an organization that you know may be smaller. It may only operate in one or a few countries, but it may have a lot of expertise that are valuable in in those countries. So I I think the first time uh, conservatives raised this issue was in the context of Lebanon, where there was. Uh, Support offered to what's called the Humanitarian Coalition, uh, which is uh, which is uh, uh, a smaller group of, of larger organizations, um, and uh, in some cases we've seen even narrower matching programs. We we raised this issue in the context of Ukraine, uh, where the government matched uh, Red Cross donations only. Um, in, in here in Canada, in response to Hurricane Fiona, we've raised the issue. Uh, them only matching Red Cross donations and how that will hurt the ability of local organizations to fundraise. Um, and and uh, we certainly we put out a statement of it in the context of, of Pakistan. And it's, it's frustrating for me uh, to, be, to be trying to be constructive here and say, look, uh, it's great to match donations, but we should be matching donations to all of the worthy organizations that are doing this work. There, and we propose ways of doing it that are, that are constructive and effective. Uh, but this government, uh, this government hasn't listened, and they're they're doubling down on on this approach that uh, that really hurts many of these of these smaller uh, uh, locally engaged organizations. So why do you think that the government has structured the federal donation matching program to favor certain organizations over others? Well, I, I think it's um, 
I think it's it's uh, often a matter of just uh, government laziness. Um, the government uh, has an easier time dealing with with certain large organizations rather than doing the work of of saying let's let's uh, try to be inclusive and identify all of the different players that are here. Um, it's it's easier for them to deal with the people they they always deal with and. And these large-scale organizations that operate all over the world, they have established relationships. You know, the, the Red Cross isn't just operating in, in a, a couple countries. They're operating everywhere. So they have, a, they have an established relationship with the government that, uh, and, and, and the Red Cross is an organization that's experienced dealing with government, and, and they do great work. But, um, but there may be organizations that, that the government hasn't dealt with as much because they operate just in particular theaters. Uh, and and uh, so it, it takes more work. It takes more effort to try to understand who those who those players are. The point I would just make here, though, is um, the government doesn't have to directly give money to every single organization. Um, it, it would be enough for them to say, "Look, we're going to try to uh, gather information about all of the donations that were made to to flood relief at various organizations, put that money in a fund, and then disperse that fund." Um, our, our, ourselves, even that kind of a matching program, where it's it's not it's not saying we're going to give a dollar to that organization if you give a dollar to that organization, but it's saying more broadly we're going to give a dollar to flood relief if you give a dollar fl to fr flood relief. Even that kind of an approach would uh, uh, would would not uh, have the perverse effects that the current policy does, which is the current policy discourages donations to to good organizations. And, I, and I've heard from organizations who. Who do great work, uh, in particular in Pakistan, uh, who who get calls from their donors, and their donors are asking, "How come the government isn't isn't funding you? You know, it does this, and, and and even some suspicion, saying, "Well, if the government's not matching your contributions, does that mean you're you're not actually doing good work?" And uh, and of course, that's not the case at all. But the the government policy, as it is, um, creates some real uh, real suspicion and challenges for these companies that are trying to go back to their donors at a time of, uh, of emergency. So what are the risks associated with the government decision to only match the donation of some organizations? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it, uh, it excludes many people that, uh, that uh, may have very particular knowledge about a particular place. Uh, there are certain general things about, about flood relief, but uh, there's also great value in having or, you know, smaller organizations uh, maybe organizations led by people from the diaspora community who who have particular understandings of of, uh, of geography and culture, uh, who who come to Canada and want to help their country of origin and and may have started organizations. They may be small organizations. They may they may scale at a certain point. Um, so so when government says they're only going to work with the very large players in terms of matching, uh, that um, that undermines the efforts of of these uh, these small local and potentially diaspora led organizations to be able to do good work uh, and be able to grow and scale up their their operations and uh, uh, you know the, the same principle applies in the humanitarian and uh, not for profit world as as applies in on the business side uh, that uh, sometimes it's easier for governments to only see the large players uh, but um, but most of the community building work right. Most of the of the help that goes out to people uh, comes from uh, things happening at, at the small scale and local level. Um, on the business side, most of the jobs that are created in this country are in uh, are are, are, are uh, small business. Uh, pe people are employed by by smaller businesses, not large large corporate giants. So, so these are um, these are realities that I think governments um, often fail to to acknowledge. Um, we need to be supporting. Small businesses, small small uh, not for profits, and small humanitarian organizations. And when you have this kind of um, perverse structure for matching, it has the effect of of pushing donations away from those smaller organizations and towards uh, the larger ones. And and that's not fair, and it's um, and it's not effective for allowing these organizations to scale and have uh, and have that impact and uh, and not to take away from larger organizations but sometimes the smaller organizations are able to be more targeted and more efficient uh, because they bring that real uh, uh, real concrete local knowledge to the table so what do you think that the federal government ought to do to improve this program well I think the simplest fix is to um, 
is to just say as a policy, we will match donations to flood relief uh, up to a certain amount. And then, um, and then ask organizations to, um, th that are doing flood relief, any organization doing flood relief to, to submit um, uh, information to show, you know, yes, we've spent this amount of money on, on flood relief. And then the government can compile that and say, okay, uh, we've received information from the not-for-profit sector saying that uh, a certain amount of money was spent on flood relief. We are going to then spend the same amount of money additionally on flood relief, uh, and and we're going to spend it ourselves. And so that that's a policy of not necessarily saying we're going to give one dollar to every organization that raised one dollar. That we're not going to match the same donation to the same organization, but we are going to match flood relief dollars with flood relief dollars. And that's and 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 that policy, rather than saying you're only going to match it to certain certain organizations, saying you're going to match match an overall amount um, has the effect of encouraging people to donate to flood relief, regardless of which organization they're donating to. So, so you, uh, yeah. that, 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 that's that's a, that's a, simp a simpler fix. Now, um, in some ways, an, an ideal fix would be for the government to be able to say every single organization, small or large, if you if you raise hundred dollars for flood relief, we're going to give you hundred dollars. Um, I think I think logistically that is much harder to do for the government. Um, so I would say let's let's go with with what I've proposed as a as a simpler fix. Um, uh, but then try to when the government spends the money as well, include as many of the small organizations as possible. So why do you think that the Canadians should care about how the federal donation matching program is structured? Well, I, I think uh, I think it's important because uh, because it helps to save more lives at the end of the day. Uh, if more organizations are doing the work, are are um, you know smaller organizations are trying to innovate and, and do this in different ways. Um, if if these organizations are able to um, to draw more uh, funds in in terms of donations by engaging different groups of people. Uh, the out and, and find ways of operating more efficiently. The outcome is um, a, a greater impact, more lives saved, more uh, more livelihoods saved, uh, more uh, uh, more infrastructure put in place that's going to protect people from events like this going forward. Um, having having the it's not just a technical question. Having the nuts and bolts of a matching program right um, really helps um, really helps uh, secure an impact. So more broadly, how do you think that the Liberal government has responded to the crisis in Pakistan? Well, I, I think we, we see a, a massive crisis in terms of, of, uh, of the flood. And uh, I think the Canadian government needs to have been more engaged for a longer period of time. And uh, um, I, uh, we had a proposal to have a study at the Foreign Affairs Committee on the government's response, and and I, I put forward an amendment to expand that study. Uh, we're going to be hearing from um, we're going to be hearing from I hope the uh, Minister of International Development to be able to dig further into this issue. Um, I think Canada could have and should have responded faster. Uh, I think um, you know there was there was kind of a responding to political pressure instead of a responding to the events uh, right right up front and, and responding quickly is important for saving lives. So I, I think there's been some gaps for sure in terms of of uh, of being ready and responsive and effective. Um, and and we're going to continue to push the government on this. But but also you know as an opposition we want to be constructive, right? We want to push the government to um, uh, to provide the support that's required. Uh, to include more organizations uh, and and to help save lives and um, and at the same time we're going to hold the government accountable for for the gaps and for the ways they're not doing this effectively. When the Pakistan was flooded in 2010, the former conservative government under the leadership of Stephen Harper pledged 71.8 million to assist, including 46.6 .6 in donations that the government matched. Why do you think that the federal government is taking a more frugal approach to donation matching this time around? Yeah, and and uh, I mean, I think it's it's a great question that only the government can can really answer. Um, and uh, th this government is not normally frugal. They uh, we, we've seen so much so much wasteful spending in so many other areas by this government. 
Um, and then we come back to to uh, you know a critical issue of human need like uh, like the floods in Pakistan uh, and the government. Um, well, I think they were delayed in making the announcement. And I think maybe as we study this issue in the Foreign Affairs Committee, we'll be able to put some some pressure on the government, and we'll see um, we'll see them do additional things. Um, but but I, this has every every um, every indication of uh, kind of being delayed, not really focusing on it. And then I'm sure there, I, I know there was political pressure from the community and the government wanted to look like they were, they were doing things. And one of the things they did was have a, uh, you know, a trip for a number of, of liberal MPs to Pakistan. And, um, you know, I, I think we should be focusing on results that we should be reacting earlier, faster. And, um, and look, the previous conservative government had an incredible record when it came to international development issues, engaging with Pakistan, humanitarian relief, but but uh, but more broadly, um, the maternal and child health initiative and many other initiatives in international development. And I don't know really if if that's very well known or, or, or widely recognized. Uh, but for people who work in international development, I think they they really recognize uh, Stephen Harper's government as as very effective. Uh, at, um, at bo- both at, at being willing to make contributions, but also at prioritizing accountability and effectiveness. When people see Canadian tax dollars spent overseas to help people, they want to see results. They want to they want to know that the government is doing any everything possible to save as many lives as they can uh, with the dollars that are spent. Um, and that that focus on on efficiency in terms of outcomes uh, was a key part of Prime Minister Harper's legacy. So do you think that Canada ought to do more to help Pakistan? Why or why not? Well, I, I think absolutely uh, they, they should, we should be doing more. Uh, we should have done more earlier. Uh, and, um, and that includes, um, um, you know, that includes the, the kind of reforms to the donation matching program uh, that, I've, that I've talked about. Uh, why is it important? Um, n- number one, uh, moral obligation and shared humanity to to help others in their uh in their time of need um but i i also think um more broadly strategically canadian engagement with pakistan is uh it's very important I and mean, we obviously want to see um we want to see pakistan be able to improve economically and also uh improve from a from a democracy and human rights and inclusion perspective and um and i think uh um, what we see increasingly is um, is authoritarian powers, especially the government of China, uh, trying to extend their influence uh, in in Pakistan and uh, and and really throughout Asia uh, in ways that um, you know you in ways that are are uh, contrary to um, to I think Pakistan's uh, sovereignty. And also the the irony is. Um, You've got a genocide uh, going on in China, where the government of China is targeting uh, is targeting people on the basis of their of their Muslim faith, the Uyghurs, uh, and yet you have um, you have significant growing Chinese influence in um, in many Muslim majority countries, such as Pakistan. And so I think you know it's important for Canada, just from a, from a moral and humanitarian perspective, to be supporting people in their hour of need, but also to be constructively engaging Pakistan uh, and uh, and and promoting values uh, that are that are important to Canadians, uh, and uh, and and trying to promote uh, strengthening of uh, of of the, the global cause of freedom in response to the um, the growing encroachment of authoritarian powers like uh, uh, like like Russia, like China. In your opinion, what feasible steps can the federal government take, or regular Canadians take, to support relief program in Pakistan? Yeah. So, um, I mean, the, the main the main focus uh, for us from the opposition has been to, to push for reforms to the matching program. And uh, in, in opposition, uh, I think it's it's often important to really zero in on on one thing that you think uh, the government can do and should do, and to repeat it over and over and over again. As we've seen with this matching program, I and mean, I brought it up in the case of Lebanon, I brought it up in the case of Ukraine, Pakistan, the Fiona uh, hurricane here in Canada. And the government has still been uh, been unresponsive. So, so we're going to continue to really drill down on that point as a change the government uh, needs to make, and also be more engaged earlier, offering offering vital support. In terms of what Canadians can do, I would just encourage people to uh, 
um, uh, to, to financially contribute to humanitarian work however they're able. I know there's um, there's a spectrum of circumstances for people. Some people are really uh, really suffering right now in Canada in terms of uh, of costs. But th- those who are able, uh, those who are able to, um, um, you know, even even uh, um, you know go go further, uh, you know, and, and make sacrifices in order to help others. I, I think that's a great thing to do. Um, and I would also just encourage people to uh, not not constrain their own donations by the federal matching program. Um, look look for good organizations that may not receive government matching, uh, but are still doing important work because those organizations need resources as well. Uh, and there are many organizations doing great work on the ground who unfortunately um, have, have not been given access to the matching program. Thank you very much for joining us today, uh, MP Gardner Genius. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. I'm Halima Sadia, and you're watching Tech TV. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date on all our latest content.